so do you get my, my intuition on how the tensor network has to take the piece solutions around that place? Because right, we're dealing with some place in the shells. So you have to take, to have the energy landscape, you have to sort of take some section of reality before and after, right? And then that is where you computationally can cut off. You've got to, got to select the cutoff to compute it. Yeah. And then that becomes your maybe computable, you know, for small, phys small physical spaces, uh, tensor network of piece solutions where each piece solution is defining the probability amplitude of every other piece solution. Yeah, there's, a, there's an easy way to do it. I mean, you can uh, write down an easy hypervector mm -hmm. that just uses, uh, I guess, you can probably zero out three columns. Right. It does, just use a simple one and figure out what happens with that. I mean, yeah. we can trace. Yeah. Things yeah. Yeah. And start exploring. Right. That, that shell space. Yeah. Yeah. Because if we think about it, okay, the hypervector has columns that are icosians. Yeah. But the icosians are related to root vectors of V8. So you can you can relate them from 8D to 4D, right? Yep. So really, when you look at that equation, you know the the equation that you have in mind, the AB equals P then the A really already has the equivalent to root vectors in E8. So really you have some objects, so you pick your hypervector columns, right. which are related back to E8 root vectors in the first place. Yeah. So really you have right. an interaction with right, right. E8 stuff already. So you know why that's so logical to me in my more reductive, simplistic way of thinking yeah. is that when you go down, when you, when you want to grab your um, your components that form a hypervector that projects the E8 to the two 600 cells, the Gossett polytope to yep. those two 600 cells, you snatch those angles that form your uh, your hypervector right out of a f of a of a four dimensional uh, the four the four dimensional sublattice of E8. That's where those values live. And what and, and the thing is is what are those angles built out of? Trivially, clear they're built out of the E8 unit root vectors, right? Every sublattice is built of the same one dimension, one simplexes. In other words, there's really only the angle combinations of the, of the, hundred and, of the 240 root vectors, right? So you can cast out repeating combinations of them to reduce down to your set of angles. And then uh, you can look at also the angles between two simplexes and three simpl simplices. So where did we get our hypervector? We snatched it out of the angle in E8 between, two, between tetrahedra, right? So algebraically, we've got to deal with that because it's not the integer angles between root vectors. Those are 60, uh, 90, you know, 120, and 180 degrees. Those are too simple. We need to say, all right, those are one simplex angles implied by the root vectors, we need to go to sets of the one simplices that form two simplices and three simplices, but are built of the root vectors, and then look at the angle of those n simplices, and that's, that's the Dirichlet integer angles that are, are A algebraic values. Yeah, so the, the columns, just like you said, the columns of the hypervector are four-dimensional objects, okay? And these are selected from that cosine. Right. But are those not just the coordinates for the vertices of the 600 cell? Yeah. Well, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's another way, it's another way to see. To it. Totally, right? It's like, yeah, we're, we're, we're playing on the 600 cell. Right. So whenever we, we apply these transformations, we're saying, okay, let me get coordinates for four vertices. Yeah. But it's a it's these special vertices that right. I don't think you can just pick any. Right. Because you'd have totally millions. Check this out. Yeah. Here's, check this out, Mike. So, um, Let's, uh, clean the board a little bit. okay, check it out. So, yeah. these angles that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So, let's look at the series of n simplices. And, um, we want to know what the uh, dihedral angle is uh, in the series, and it goes uh, like this. Okay. 
such that this is the tetrahedron, this is the equilateral triangle. See, we have our cosine one half equals 60 yeah. degrees. And then here's the tetrahedron, and so on, okay? But this bad boy is special. Okay, these are all irrational values after this one. This one can be written, this, this is hiding the golden ratio, the relationship between two simplices in E8. You don't have to project it, it's right there in E8. Yep. And that relationship between simplex one to its near neighbor, simplex two, can be written as arc cosine um, three golden ratio minus one divided by four plus arc cosine one half. And you, I don't know if you can do that with, with uh, any of the other ones. We've tried. And so that's, so then you take out, but every one of these is composed by rotating by arc cosine one half, the n simplex below it, the, uh, the one, one simplex below it. So we rotate this by 60. Then we rotate this copy by 60 to get this. We rotate one of those by 60 into the fourth spatial dimension and so on. And so you cast out this component because that is, so that, and then what is this when you cast out this component? This is 15.522 degrees, exactly this. And that right here plus the 60 degree component equals arc cosine uh, one third is the, uh, the angle in any four dimensional subspace of E8, uh, sublattice of E8. Uh, in terms of the angle between its three simplexes, arc cosine one quarter. Yeah. So when we try to represent those angles, those relationships in R3, mm -hmm. we don't have room for the 60, because that is the 60 that popped out, right, extruded the fourth spatial dimension. So right. we cast that out, leaving ourselves with the residue, which is this beautiful golden ratio yeah. value, arc cosine 15, I mean, 15.522 uh, degrees, and we play with that as twist to represent, you know, curvature yeah. and represent deeply the relationship between tetrahedra and E8. So, and that's our hypervector. That, that number is our hypervector actor, and then you can take it into the algebraic realm and just deal with it yeah, algebraically. Yeah, that's, that's, that's going to be the determining factor in choosing the legal hypervectors. Right. Because if we have the set of icosians, which is 120, mm -hmm. and we choose any four, that's a huge overcounting of the totally. Possible. Well, that's what I was so, saying yesterday. So this, this is going to come down to yeah, this. But this is the only one, this yeah. hypervector, which is in, built into E8, sub uh -huh. 4D sublattice, that's the only one that brings you to H3 and H4. In other words, you project the E8 slice to 4D. You have to use that one to get H4, and you have to use that one to get H3. Yeah, so I'll, I'll write it down just for a sec. So going back to the talk with Garrett, so I'll kind of show you the way that uh, we're describing it uh, for that day with Garrett. So going back to the Elster Sloan, right? Uh, so there's a matrix here, so you probably <laughs> remember. Uh, it's an eight by eight matrix. And we have a four by four part here, which we call H. And then we have H transpose. So this is, this is the hyper vector here. So this is going to be, uh, we have to figure out which ones are legal yeah. In this space. And this is just a scaling here. So this is the identity, 4x4 four four identity. And then we have, uh, this is just the notation from that day. And this involves a golden ratio. Right. So, and then I think it's 1 over root 5. Right. Okay. So this is hitting a column of, of eight components. Right. So it's just, uh, this is, we initially begin with an E8 root vector. Mm-hmm. But we can just write it as R1, R2, R3, R4. There's some coordinates, right? Okay, so this, this guy, let's kind of look at it this way. So if I write down the result of this multiplication, right. this guy's dilatating these. So contracting, dilating, transforming. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a dilation, but then this one is dilating yeah. these. Uh -huh. It's a different way. Right. So you can see, okay, well, if, if you think about it in terms of uh, the 600 cell, we're actually, we're, we're uh, differentiating between the two 600 cells. Right. So remember how they're, right. they're in a ratio to each other. Right. So 
here, this this H, what I select here, uh, I can't just pick any four. So you want to, that restricts you to the ones that will bring you yeah. to six hundred cells so, or H four. Yeah. So this this is these um, are these give you H four. So it's like the whole set gives you H four, but within that subset, we have to relate it here to. Um, and I mean this this is going to be the determining factor in determining the shells. Okay. So uh, it's just a matter of. But you don't. Yeah, but you know, you don't, you can't get the H4, the 600 cell, unless it's this one, which is the relationship between any two adjacent tetrahedra and E8. Yeah. That's your fundamental angle and your hypervector package. Yeah, this, this right here, uh, for the sake of the presentation, was chosen so that these columns, right? So it's a four by four matrix with the columns. We just hand select them from the icosians. So we have the, the integer coordinates here. So if you see it, I think it's, uh, I mean, for instance, I, I think we had a, like a negative one, 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 one. These are very specific vectors. Right. So from the set of icosians, but those give you the H4 symmetry. Okay. Right? So it's already inserted here. Right. Uh, and the angles are going to be determined here. But I think there's a, there's a, a, a further yeah. uh, factor that's, uh, so we have a set of 120, but that can be decomposed in eight. 1696 so I think uh, if we just choose if we have 120 we just choose four and we insert them here mm -hmm. that will give us way more hyper right. vectors than we need right uh, it needs to be uh, restricted yeah, yeah. We, we need to restrict it down I'm thinking uh, we're, we're gonna look at the the order of the, the, the vial symmetry so so Mike I suggest deeply acclimate yourself to the cut plus projection uh, formal tools formalisms and then you'll be able to say oh all right well then that restricts me and then you go to your matrix right analogs of yeah. that re of those restrictions yeah it's gonna it's gonna be in there so uh, but it's nice to see the, uh, the yeah. answer yeah yeah um, hey uh, let's go let's get everybody in, in get